Hello and welcome to the presentation on piecewise functions. A piecewise function just builds off of what we talked about already with functions. Functions, of course, are like machines that take input and produce an output. Right? You plug something into a function. Let's say functions. Let's say you have something like, I don't know, f of x, which usually denotes some kind of function, equals x squared plus 3. Well, the idea is that in this function, right, this is your machine, your function, your f of x, anything you put into it will give an output. So if I put a 2 into this function, what happens? Well, I plug it in, and I get 2 squared plus 3, which is just 4 plus 3, or 7. So you plug a 2 in, and you get, oops, you plug a 2 in, and you get a 7. If you plug a 3 in, what happens? Well, then it's 3 squared. That's your x value, right? These are your inputs or your x values that you're plugging in. You plug 3 in, 3 squared is 9, plus 3 is 12. And these are your outputs. You can think of these as the outputs of the f of x values, right, or the y values, same thing. So input, x. The function is based on the x, that's why it's written this way, right? Your result is a function of the x value, x value that you plugged in. And a piecewise function really essentially follows the same idea, except the difference is with a piecewise function, there are rules, right? It depends what kind of an input I put in. So if I put in a certain number, let's say like a 3, which is odd, it could have a certain rule. Or if I plug in a 2, which is even, it could have another rule. And even and odd is just one example. There are many ways that we can define piecewise functions. The thing is, with a piecewise function, it depends on the input, right? You have to pay attention. What kind of number are you actually plugging in. So let's get started on that and set it up. It could say something like f of x equals different things depending on what the input is. So perhaps the function is 2x cubed plus 4. I'm just making this up, up, right? If what? Let's say, I don't know, x is even. And let's say that the function equals x squared minus 1 if x is odd. And all this is saying is that this is a function, right? But the function changes based on what you, you input into the function. If you're going to put an even number into this function, you want to use this formula up here. If you're going to use an odd value, you want to use this formula down here. That's a piecewise function. And we can evaluate it just as we would for this function. Just pay attention to the rule that you're following. So let's say, in this case, what is f of 2? Well, 2 is even, and that's x, right? So we want to use this top formula. That means you want to use 2 times 8, right? 2 cubed is 8, plus 4, and that's 16 plus 4, which is 20. So if we plug an even value in, we would, and, and the value is 2, we would get 20. But if I plug in, I don't know, f of 3, now we use a different rule. It's different from before, where we use the same rule on any input, we use this rule down here, it's a piecewise function. So that's 3 squared, right, we're using the bottom function here, minus 1, or 9 minus 1, which is 8. That's the basic idea of a piecewise function. And in other videos, as we get better at this, we'll start to talk about um, the applications of this and why this is not just some arbitrary rule, but in fact something that's really important. Let's get some more practice with this. So sometimes with, with piecewise functions, you might have layers of functions, right? You might have something that says something, I don't know, g of x equals, well, let's say it equals 4. It, it can happen where it equals a constant if x is even. And then let's say it equals, I don't know, x squared plus 1 if x is odd. So here's your piecewise function. And then we can compound it. Well, let's, let's throw another one in there. Let's have f of x. Let's have fx, f of x equal, I don't know, 3x squared plus 2 times g of x. So here, f of x is actually defined by g of x, right? So we can solve for f of x if we look at g of x and then combine it. So let, let's do that. So how do we approach this? Well, let's say we, we want to find... Um, g of, of 2 and or g of 4 
and then g of 5, we'll get three different values. Well, if, if, if you're looking at g of 2, 2 is even. So the answer is 4, because x is even, and then whenever that happens, this means the result is 4. Here, the result is also 4. Here, we're plugging in an odd value, so we want to use this bottom formula. So then it becomes 5 squared, right, plus 1, or 26. 5 squared is 25, plus 1 is 26. So the g values really, you know, are vary here, because if they're even, any even g value, like g of 100, that'll still give you 4. Because based on what this function is saying is if you plug in an even number, the result is 4. But if you plug in an odd number, you want to use the bottom formula. And this connects to f of x. If I want to evaluate f of, let's say, 2, and then we'll get f of 3, what do I do? Well, 2 is the x value, and in this formula, x must always remain the same. So let me re rewrite it. You get 3 times 2 squared right, plus 2 times g of 2, because x in all cases here is 2. So what does this equal? Well, 3 times 2 squared is, is what? Well, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3, that's 12. What is g of 2? Here's our formula right here. Well, 2 is even, right? So that means g of 2 must fall into this top category, and that means g of 2 is 4. So that means you have 4 times 2, which is 8. You add these two up, and we get 20. Here in this function, we plug in 3 for x. So now we have 3 times 3 squared plus 2 times oops, two times g of 3. And that even rhymes. So here we have 3 squared, which is 9, times 3, 27, right? And here, right, it's 2 times g of 3. So we're plugging 3 into the g function, and that's an odd value, so we want to use this formula right here. And g of 3, we'll work it out over here. That's 3 squared plus 1, or 10, right? 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10. So this really means 2 times 10, or 20. So in this case, it would equal 47, right? 27 and 20 is 47. So you can, you can have all sorts of rules of piecewise functions, and we can even expand it so f of x is a piecewise function itself, and then you have a piecewise function within a a piecewise function. It, there are all sorts of combinations. Let's look at what it might mean to have three functions altogether. You have f of x, right? We'll start there and we'll say at f of x equals, I don't know, 4x if x is even, and 3x if x is odd. Then let's go with g of x next. It's typically another function you might see. Let's have g of x equal something like 2x if x is even, and let's have it equal um, 6 if x is odd. Right, this is your piecewise function there. And now let's have a third function, h of x. Let's say that h of x equals, I don't know, 2x plus something fun, f of x over g of x. So there are all sorts of questions they can ask you now. Um, one thing you might be asked is to evaluate some of one of these functions. Let's say they ask you, what is h of 3? Well, h of 3, right, let's plug it right into this formula, and actually I'll write it down here so you can see it right next to it, equals 2 times 3, right, 2 times 3, plus f of 3 over g of 3. So let's evaluate that. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. f of 3 is 3 times 3, because x is odd, and, and this is what the piecewise function is telling us to do. So that's just 9. g of 3 is 6, right, because x is odd. So it's 6 plus 9 over 6. 9 over 6 is just, of course, 6 goes into 9 once, and, and 3 is left over, so it's 1 and a half. So 6 plus 1 and a half is seven and a half. So you could say here that h of three is seven and a half. And that's that's one one thing they might ask you. What if but what if they ask something else? Like f of h of four and they compound this function. Well now what you have to do is first evaluate h of four. 
and we'll use the same formula. 2 times 4 is 8, right? h of 4 equals 8 plus, well, x is even now, so f of x is just 4 times 4, or 16, and 3 times, and then g of x is 2x, or 8. And now we get something nice, right? 8 plus 2 is 10. So since h of 4, right, reduces down to the number 10, and we're taking f of h of 4, we're really just taking f of 10, right? Because h of 4 is 10. And our rule for f of x, when, when x is even, is that f of x will equal 4x. So in this case, it's just 4 times 10, right? And that is 40. So f of 10 is just 40. And that's a pretty basic example of how these piecewise functions can compound within each other. And it's actually not so bad. Just remember to break this down first. Thanks.